Welcome to the Kanoi Church Podcast. We're glad that you're interested in connecting through this teaching time. If you'd like to connect further, feel free to reach out to us through our website, kanoichurch.org. For now, enjoy this teaching from Kanoi Church, where our mission is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, good morning. Good morning. Wow. I have to check my notes here because there's two people on the stage who like to write things into them. One being my kid and Kyle. <laughs> uh, now, have you ever been laid up from a surgery or something or been really ill? And you're always wondering, how am I going to get my meals made? How's my yard work going to get done? How's the house going to get clean? And then all of a sudden, these things all come to place. It's all part of outreach. That's what we're talking about today, outreach. We're in our series called Back to the Basics, Keeping It Simple. I have a summary today. It's going beyond the walls of Jerusalem. And we're going to get into the book of Acts a little bit and the book of Luke in a little bit. Um, but... We begin looking at a need for outreach. We look at the different things that are happening in the world today. And I look at so many empty chairs in churches now. There's such a need out there. There's people that are hurting everywhere. Jesus just went, Jesus didn't just go beyond the walls of a church building. He went to beyond the walls of Jerusalem. He went out into the, out into the country, out into the places to see what's going on. He didn't stay confined to a building. If you want to reach somebody, you need to get out and about. So outreach is going beyond the limits. That's what outreach is about. Sometimes we often hold back because we're too ingrown or we're ashamed, uh, resistance, or we feel like the culture of the world has really changed. And the culture has changed. But there's one thing that hasn't changed, that's the word of God. And that's what we need to be spreading around. So no matter what the excuse is, it's not to negate the fact that Jesus says, go forth and proclaim the gospel. So we often have this issue where we want to send Jesus out and we just want to stay home. And there's a problem with this. Jesus is saying, I will go with you wherever you go. So if there's someone sick in the hospital, he says, I will be with you there in that hospital room. If you go to the prisons, I will be with you in the prisons to visit those people. If you go into town where the drug people are, I will be with you as you minister to those people because there's a hard need. We got a world that is so messed up out there and they need Jesus. And we're slacking on our part. So many people need reached. So we need to get into the neighborhoods. We need to get into the local establishments, whether it's going to a club or whether it's going to a bar. And I know people say, oh, well, you go into a bar, you end up drinking and yada, yada, Not necessarily. There's people that are really, really hurting in there and got stories to share. I would take my father-in-law to the VA hospital three days a week. You want to hear some stories of what these vets been through? Some have been through many, many wars and seen some horrific things, and they are afraid to talk about them. They need people to listen. Don't go in there and just start going off on your own thing. Actually listen to these guys. There's a lot of things that are going on, things that they dealt with and seen, and it's horrendous. So I'm going to get into the book of Acts. I'm going to read Acts 8, 26 through 31. Now, an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. He started out on his way, and he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasure of Candake, which means the queen of Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, And on his way home, he was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. 
the spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you not understand what you're reading? Philip asked him. How can I? He said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Jesus called Philip out of a revival that he was at, and there's probably thousands of them there, to go out and minister to the one who was lost. He didn't sit there and wait and say, well, I got a lot of people I got to preach to first. He got up and immediately took off. Not sent to a church full of people just waiting to hear him speak, sent out to reach that one person. And we talked about this before, the one sheep that got lost went out to look for them. Many folks come to church on a Sunday morning and a lot of them read their Bible, but they don't understand what they're reading. We come here to learn about Jesus so we can apply it to our lives and not keep it just behind four walls. Philip went out to meet that one person who was sitting on a chariot reading the book of Isaiah and not understanding it. He eventually got it because Philip took the time to explain to him what it was all about and shared Jesus with him. The eunuch then got baptized. So there's a couple of reasons that we don't just invite someone to church. Why didn't God send someone to invite that eunuch to church? Because he wanted to send him out to minister to him where he was. Philip understood, and we are to understand that Jesus, just not an invitation, is not enough. What if you feel like God has drawn somebody to you you invite them to church. Sometimes when you invite someone to church, they don't show up. There's nothing you can do about it. You planted the seed, they're missing out. They're missing out on something very potential that they could learn more about Jesus Christ with. And there's nothing wrong with inviting people to church, but it's just not enough. Our call to outreach is not just inside these four walls. It's getting out there and using our actions, our words, and explaining things to people. We can't just sit here and wait until God sends someone to us to be saved. The body of Christ is a lot like a football team, okay? A football team, you have the players on there, you get into a huddle. They call a play just like here on Sunday morning. We come to church, you get to hear a message, and you're supposed to apply it. If your football team calls a play, and let's say the running back isn't paying attention because he's too busy watching a cheerleader on the sidelines, they call the play. <laughs> I would never do that, but, and <laughs> but... But they call the play, he's not paying attention, and the play is to block right, open a gap between the guard and a tackle, and that's where the running back's supposed to go. He didn't hear the play. He gets the ball, hands off. He goes the opposite way, and he gets sacked. He's losing yardage. So we are supposed to come into church and get filled with knowledge that we can take out and share to make progress in the world, just like the football team. And the thing is with the football team is they're in a huddle, they're in a team, they study the plays. But... There's people in the bleachers who can't hear the play. They're our audience out there, folks. They're the people we need to reach. We need to be out there getting them to come in here. We have to be good listeners. So we need to get out of our huddle here on Sunday mornings and do what God's called us to do. There's a second reason we do not just uh, invite someone to church. And we're going to look at Luke for this. In 
in Luke. We're going to go to Luke 24. And we're going to look at verses 46 to 49. Then he opened their minds and said, and, and so they could understand the scripture, he told them, that is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead and on the third day. And in repentance, the forgiveness of your sins will be preached in the name to all nations to be, to begin, to beginning at Jerusalem. You are you are witness of these things, and I am going to send you what my Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have clothed the power from the high. Luke is sitting here talking about Jesus, and then Jesus is the one that spoke those words on why we are to witness, because he went and died on a cross for us. It's a story we are to be sharing. This is basically telling us why Philip went out to minister to the witness to that one lost eunuch, to go out and share the gospel to that one person. We're not gonna be able to save the whole world we're in a small community. The world is so big. But we do have a community here that is hurting. And we could be good witnesses to them. And I know our town has like 40 churches in it. And everybody thinks that we're competing with one another. But we don't. We need to be in unity with this. A witness tells you, a witness will tell you that what they've seen, and what they heard, and what they experienced. And I said this before in a message that we share the gospel by telling our story. You can't be a witness and not be personally involved. You are sent, let's say if you were sent a subpoena, you come to a court to testify. The judge does not want you to send someone else in your place, right? Because a witness personally delivers the message. A man left for the service, and he promised to write to his girlfriend every single day, which he did. But at his surprise, he found out that she got married to the mailman. <laughs> so Jesus reached out to all kinds of people, folks. Look, he reached out, and it didn't matter what the race was, or the class was, or the gender was. He sat and ate with prostitutes and tax collectors and the Samaritans and, and sinners of all sorts just to show them God's grace is for everyone. Are we to avoid the unbelievers refusing to socialize with sinners? Refusing to share food and clothes and support with the unbelievers? No, we are to show mercy to those who need our help. So if you go back and you look at the story of the Good Samaritan, we know, everybody probably knows the story, but the Good Samaritan talks about a person who was walking along a road, who got robbed, beat up, stripped of his clothes and laid there for dead. And we know that a priest goes by and sees him and he doesn't have the time for him and goes to the other side of the street and keeps going on. A Leviite does the same thing, but then a Samaritan comes along and this Samaritan takes care of him and gets him every single thing he needs. Puts him up in a hotel room, banches his wounds, all those things. And the moral of the story is that you should put aside your differences and help those who are in need. And there's so many people that are hurting right now. The Samaritan did not think about a race or a different religion competing against somebody. He just saw a man that needed help. And that's where we are to be. There's no substitute for a personal delivery of being there for somebody. 
whether it's sinners or whether it's somebody here from church that's in need. Outreach is so important. I'm going to get into a, the conclusion here. Um, Luke goes on in the rest of those verses there, and Jesus talks about his ascension into heaven. And we need to know how to witness. Where the church gets a program together, a lot of people don't have a personality like I have. I can talk to anybody. It doesn't matter who you are. I can talk to anybody. But not everybody has a personality. And there's different ways of doing outreach, whether it's sending letters or whatever. So many. But we need to get together on the same page here and work together. And maybe at the, at the meeting next week, we could talk about a little bit that we need to get on the same page of where we could go in our town to help out. Whether it's at a park where the drug dealers are so bad, where we can talk to these kids. We don't just go to a gas station, which the gas prices are out the roof right now, but um, it's a different story. <laughs> but we don't go there just to waste gas by sitting and letting our engines idle. We go there to fill up so we can go to other places. We can go out. We need to give back. We don't want to hoard things. We don't want to take in all this knowledge that we learn on a Sunday morning or at a Bible study or anything that, and not use it. God's calling us to go out and do these things. We need to give back to a community that is hurting. And we don't want to just do it in time of crisis. We have the school shootings, and I love how the, the communities just come together, and we see hurricanes, and people just come together. But then what happens after these crises and all these things are met? They fade away, you don't hear about them anymore. But there's so many people out there that are hurting and we need to come together to reach those. We often get caught up with different things and we make too many excuses of why we don't do outreach. And it's a shame because it's what Jesus Christ called us to do, to spread the gospel. We talked about, probably about a month ago, Kyle and Pastor Nick did a message on hospitality. And we go out there, and some of us are actually doing what they're told in speaking outreach. And when they get out there, they can get the people in the doors. And they might be different. Let's say they smell like cigarette smoke, or they smell like alcohol, or they dress different, or they're gay, or whatever. How do you treat them inside here means a lot. You got to love them like they're anybody else, like they're your own children, because they're God's children too. We can't sit there and judge people. We get them in here and we got to be loving, caring, not nitpicking at people. So I'm gonna get into the benediction here soon, let the worship team finish out, but I have a, a question. Whom are we trying to reach for Christ? Are we just trying to reach ourselves that are inside these four walls? No. Thank you, everyone. We are to reach everyone that is out there. We need to find people that are comfortable going out there. I used to have meetings at the country table restaurant with the pastor all the time and we would meet with other folks. And there's this veteran that came in and he would sit at a table all by himself every week, because we'd go there every day, and he would sit there at this one little table and he doesn't say nothing, he gets his, feel, his food and he just sits there. I felt like I needed to get up and go talk to this guy. So one of the times after our meeting, I got up and I went and sat with him and I asked him just to share a part of his story. And at first, he didn't want to. He talked a little bit, but week after week, he started sharing with me some of the things, horrific things he saw. And I told him there's a God that can, that can help him through all this. Whether this guy went to church or not after that or whatever he believes in, I don't know, but I'm praying that a seed was planted and that he thinks about that every day, that he's not alone in this anymore. And all it takes is for somebody to sit there. See, you gotta be a good listener and you gotta have your eyes open and be looking because there's so many people that are hurting out there who need something. And just like that guy sitting in the restaurant, 
Maybe me just going over and sit and talk with him and just listening to him is all it takes. So I'm gonna do our benediction here, Kyle, if you guys wanna get ready. It's out of Mark 16, 15. Jesus tells us to go into the world and proclaim the gospel to the all creation. Not just inside four walls of a church. Because if we're doing what we're told and doing what God wants us to do, these seats will be filled every Sunday. The churches, 40 churches in E-Town will be full every Sunday. And I'm praying that everybody here listens and really takes it to heart because there's such a need. So many people out there hurting. I like to go on Wednesday night to um, the Bainbridge Inn for steak night. And they have good food there. But being there, there's people that just like to go and drink, just have fun. But there's also people there that are there for a reason. They're trying to wash their blues away. They're hurting. And to sit there and hear someone, I can be the eyes and ears for these people that can help them. And I know people are, are frowned against going into established like that, but I believe our Lord Jesus Christ would be in those spots. He would go there and sit with these people and talk to them. If you don't have a personality for that style, that's okay. Not everybody has that because it's so easy to get caught up in what they're doing and start drinking with them. You gotta be strong in your faith to be able to do it. So let's turn to God in prayer here. Almighty God, you gave your people an assignment to fill here on earth. You said to them to go into the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Lord, I pray that this is the will to the mission of the church. To ask that you keep our hearts and our minds open so that we are willing to seek to touch those outside the four walls of a church. Those who do not know him. I just pray that you will be with each and every person here today as we celebrate those that have served for us and lost their lives. I just pray that you be with those families. I pray that you be with each and every person here this week, that your words will touch their mouths and touch their hearts, that they will go out and share their stories. I just pray that you just keep loving your arms, wrapping your loving arms around a world that is hurting so bad. Too many nonsense things happening out there. I pray that Jesus open our hearts and make a change. And it starts with us. We need to share the love of Jesus with everybody. But I just pray that Jesus guide us and lead us and protect us throughout this week. And I ask this in your precious holy name. Amen. Hi, this is Pastor Nick. Thanks for listening. I hope something that you heard today was very helpful. If you want to connect with us further, feel free to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or our website, kanoichurch.org. Sure, I'm glad we're in this together.